Hey everybody, my name is Jennifer Romatelli and we are here in the lobby of the Sims Hall Science at Roper Mountain Science Center. You can see our well-known brain exhibit over here. Um, and if you've ever been here on a field trip, I'm sure you've seen that before. Today, we're gonna to be talking about forces and motion. Now, as you probably know, a force is a push or a pull on an object. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is that anytime there is a force, on an object, there needs to be a second object involved as well. So if I push a cart, the cart is getting pushed, but I'm the one pushing the cart. So there's two objects. And I have another example of that here. I'm holding an object, but there's actually a second object here as well. Inside the balloon that I'm holding is, of course, air. And the two objects are actually pushing on each other right now. However, they're not going anywhere because right now the forces are in balance holding the balloon. Now, if I were to release this, it gives the air a path to move and it'll come out of the balloon this way. In that case, there's also a force on the balloon. Will the balloon go the same direction as the air, do you think, or the opposite direction? Hopefully, you've got a prediction in your minds. So we're gonna let this go and see where it winds up. At the bottom of the stairs, apparently. and. You saw that although the air went this way, the balloon went in the opposite direction. Those forces are always in opposite directions. Now that's an example of a rocket. All rockets work in the same way in that there is a force away from the rocket on one object which propels the rocket in the opposite direction. We're gonna do an experiment with another rocket right here, this bottle, which we're hopefully going to be able to shoot across the stairwell here to the opposite side. Um, now, whenever something is moving, whenever there's motion, there's several factors that come into play to determine how fast it's gonna go and where it's gonna go. The direction of the force determines what direction it's going to move and how fast it's gonna go is determined by its mass and the amount of force that is on it. Now, this empty two liter bottle is pretty low mass, pretty light, so it doesn't take a whole lot of force to get it moving. Um, one other thing that is gonna come into play is any other forces that are working against us. So if you think to yourself, what other forces might be affecting this bottle right now? We have gravity, which is pulling it downward towards the floor. That's working against us a little bit, but even more so is going to be the friction between this straw and this rope strung across the stairwell. We've reduced the friction as much as we possibly can by using a very smooth surface rope and the straw, of course, is a very smooth surface as well. So hopefully that friction isn't going to work against us too much and we'll get our rocket all the way across. Now to propel this rocket, we're gonna use some ethanol. Just a little bit of this liquid, which you can't buy in stores, by the way, so if you're not thinking about trying this at home. Just a tiny bit of that liquid into the bottle is all that we need. And I actually don't want the ethanol in liquid form. I want it to evaporate into a gas. So I'm going to rotate this bottle several times, which is going to spread out the ethanol and cause it to evaporate into a gas inside the bottle, which will hopefully mix with the oxygen in the air and make a perfect rocket fuel for us. And then what we're going to do is actually ignite the gas using this plater. If you guys studied matter this year, you know that if you heat up particles of gas, they spread out and take up more space. So if the gas inside this bottle spreads out and takes up more space, the only place for it to go is out that tiny hole towards me. If the gas is being pushed this way, the force on the bottle is going to be, if you remember with our balloon, in the opposite direction. So let's see if we can get that to happen. I hope you've enjoyed learning about forces in motion in our virtual Roper Mountain field trip. Have a great day, everybody.